Welcome back. Have you ever thought of writing your own story? Have you ever thought of writing a book? Have you ever thought that that would actually be crazy? It's not so crazy. And Lisa Caprelli is here to tell us how she did it herself and also how she's helping other people do it. Lisa, welcome. Yes, thank you, ladies. What a great platform you have. What we are show. so excited yeah. to talk about. We want to hear about yes. your story. Well, thank you. Well, so many people want to write a book, and many people have a story in them. We all come from unique experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you pick any question you ask someone, tell me about your life. If, you know, they're going to tell you maybe about their life. They're going to tell you probably about maybe their struggle or how they overcame something. They might tell you about their grandparents and that change. So, I. I love to study human behavior, uh, and so in wanting to write my own book since I was a little girl, and putting that voice out, out on paper, um, I learned how to self-publish along the way, and a lot, 84 percent of people want to write a book, is yeah. what the statistics say, and less than three percent actually do it. Hmm. I remember that. So when I wrote my, my book the first time, so when the first edition came out, I had started writing, and then I got a big contract, and I put the book on the shelf and said, I told myself a story that I'm a sequestered writer, which was actually true. Like, I couldn't work all day and then come home and write. Mm -hmm. I really needed a block of time. And then 9-11 hit, and I was living in New York City, and my business uh, was all at the World Trade Center. And so I survived, my business blew up, and all of a sudden I had nothing but time on my hands. Mm -hmm. Lots of sequestered writing, and a need to put some good energy out into the world. Yes. And in the next six weeks, wrote my book, and it was published four months later. Wow. So I totally feel Well, hats off for you for putting that time. Story. Because mm -hmm. sometimes people still have the time and they're stuck. Yep. Yeah. And I feel like they need like a book accountability partner. And when I still say that phrase to people, that I will be your book accountability partner. If you have an idea for something, it'll get done. They just need a roadmap, a blueprint, if you will. Absolutely. I helped a girl just in two months. She just got her published recently. Congratulations. Laura Fun Feinstein, she wrote a poem book. Oh, great. And I told, she said, I don't want to do it. I just want you to help me. And she had 50 poems for a book, which was enough. Wow. And then I said, if you have 130, then you can have a book spine. So in one week, she gave me 130 pages total. Wow. And that's what she got published at. And her life is changing. She's a mom of five children, and now, but she's, she wants to be an author. Now she wants to speak. Now she wants to do more. And um, I love being part of that process. Mm -hmm. How can you not help other people? It's so fun to help people realize their creativity and what they're capable of. And I think that's, I don't know about you, Lauren, but that's the reason that I love PR mm -hmm. so much. Yes. And I love helping people with their creative right. projects. Right, and you, so. you see where they are here and what they start getting. You mm -hmm. know, PR begets PR. You know, helping other people you begets other helping other people. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit more about this cute, cute book that I see here oh, on the table, thank you. Unicorn Jazz. I love the title. Isn't that a great title? Yes. So thank you. So first of all, when I started telling people I'm writing a book about unicorns, girls of all ages, I love unicorns. I love unicorns too. Right. We all love, love unicorns. unicorns. Right. And, we and, do. and uh, so my girlfriends were saying, I want three. I, I want to be Unicorn Jazz. And I was like, well, the, you know, the book hasn't even come out yet. It's on Amazon now. Um, and I got uh, my illustrator from my hometown of El Paso, Texas, Davey Villalobos. I mean, what's a children's book without good illustration? Sure. Absolutely. So I had to explain my concept, the vision, the story. And Unicorn Jazz, in the, in the first book, uh, she's shy, character. She moves, to move new land. she moves to a new land with friends that she's never met before, wants to fit in. We all can relate to that. Mm -hmm. And no one wants to be her friend. She goes home and tells her mom, you know, <laughs> nobody wants to talk to me. The horses say, I'm weird because I have this horn. And, and so there's different characters in the story. Mm -hmm. And then she meets a wolf named Crow that, become, that believes in her. And she has her magical power, with, which is her voice. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of great things in it. I, I really want people to get the book. Um, and so much has transpired from doing this that I love. Like, it's one mm -hmm. of the greatest things I love to do. Well, one thing I love about the book and, and why I think it's resonating so well with people is because you're basically taking a life problem and you're putting it in a safe space. Mm -hmm. It's a unicorn that doesn't know if she fits in. So right. the kids can be like super into it. They can grab the life lessons from it, but maybe it doesn't feel quite so real to them. Exactly. Right. You know, and exactly. maybe not quite so scary. Right. And it's an open conversation for the parent to then mm -hmm. have with children. Because yeah. as young people, we all went through stuff that we, you know, maybe we were bullied. Maybe we didn't know how to speak up. One of my subsequent books will be Unicorn Jazz Speaks Up and teaching mm -hmm. about communication. Mm -hmm. I was that shy little girl and I didn't know how to speak up. Mm -hmm. And I wish I had stories to explain concepts, to open up those dialogues that are between children, 
and mm -hmm. parents, teachers, parents and children. I love that too and I love it that your protagonist is like the most magical and amazing creature <laughs> on the planet because that's what yeah. these little kids are, you know, and this is who they are and who they they need to identify with so I love that. And I love that you're focusing mm -hmm. on children and I know you're also focusing on teens. Yes. So what are you doing with them? So skip a step. Uh, skip a step and you can see the work also on Amazon skipastep.net. So my co-author Michael Ashley and I uh, we wanted to give back to the teens and we interviewed 13 different entrepreneur leaders and to ask them questions about what gives for a meaningful life. It's not just another get rich, this is why you want to be an entrepreneur, because as we know, an entrepreneur, it t it's hard. It just, <laughs> no one says, I made it to the top, it was so easy, it was so perfect, said no one ever. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly because That's entrepreneurs true. have already moved on to the next, and yeah. they're starting at the oh, bottom again. And, and so, again, mm -hmm. studying, loving to study human behavior and interviewing so many people, I've interviewed hundreds and hundreds of people wanting to know what makes for happiness and love, not just about the great cool cars they have or the trips they take. And in opening up and being authentic, you know, Michael Gerber is the first chapter in the book and wow, that's a great read. You know, he's 80 years he's old amazing. now and he's yeah. still out there speaking and helping mm -hmm. and influencing people. And I asked him a question at the end, what is the meaning of life to you? And instantly he's like, it's to create. You know, one person said it's, it's, it's to have vision. Um, Jessica Jackley is in there. She's co-founder of Kiva.org. Oh, wow. oh. She was a TEDx speaker, written books herself, and everyone, when they, you know, again, they were telling the, the they're telling the story in each chapter, kind of like Chicken Soup for the sto Soul mm -hmm. Story. It's an anthology, and I already have book two in the works and book three. And they're telling it for the youth, ages are 13 to 24. So they're, think about if I asked you questions, and I said the age group is age 13 to 24, what would those lessons be? You're gonna have a different voice and listen to that person, right? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't about impressing, it wasn't about look at me where I've come. I mean, some people cried and were authentic about many things and, and uh, it, uh, you become friends with these people too and I'll tell you some of these people that inspired them to want to write more mm -hmm. and do more as well. It's kind of like a pay it forward type yeah. of thing, you yeah. know? And I think that it's, I think it's so meaningful when we, we help each other out like that. And, and I think that sometimes we think, well, it's a business setting, you know, it's not really giving, but yet it is. And those are some of the most valuable relationships. You can right. Have. Well, in interviewing people, mm -hmm. it gave me hope and inspiration to do what I love, like uh -huh. unicorn jazz and really believing in yourself. You know, um, Mitch Free, who's in here, he, did, he struck a deal with Jeff Bezos and talks about that and talks about how he gave away a million dollars, a million dollar party to all the people who stayed loyal to him until he sold his company. Wow. And so, you know, we all go through struggles mm -hmm. or when we have that idea and it takes someone believing in you. And in the book, Unicorn Jazz, um, Wolf the Crow is the one that believes in Unicorn mm -hmm. Jazz and mm -hmm. then things change for her. That's so awesome. um, I just think it's so important to, like you said, give back mm -hmm. to the younger generation, be a mentor, give back and watch how your life changes. And I think what you're doing here is inspiring young people not only to tell their story, but to publish their story, yes. so now they become published authors. Yes, well with that said, so I am also mm -hmm. um, have a guidebook called Writing Your Story and Turning It Into a Published Book. I do workshops, I'm helping teens. Uh, get published on Amazon so by the time they graduate they cannot author to their resume so I'm working with some kids in Texas right now um, who are in a lower socioeconomic you know school status mm -hmm. and they wanted to have aspirations of being a doctor and I said let's help you get there you know mm -hmm. so they're motivated they're they're like oh my god you're gonna teach me how to write a book and I said yeah I'm gonna show you how to publish a book mm -hmm. And, uh, and first of all, the younger generation, they are in writing mode. If you think about it, mm -hmm. think back to when you were in school or college, your research mode, right? And these, yeah. and these younger generation of, of students, they have technology at their fingertips. It's not going to the library, right. getting the microfiche, right. Right. <laughs> right. right? And so I just think what an awesome time to be an entrepreneur. What an mm -hmm. awesome time with technology to really do anything you want to yeah, do. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as a team, anywhere. what as a teen, what an awesome time to actually be able to find value in who you are. Yes. I think that's huge. But we're in that time frame when most kids are struggling, yes. you're actually helping them find ground. Yeah, mm -hmm. and people say, uh, like I'm working with the university right now, they want to offer this to their teacher teens, like a teen summer camp. And they're, they were saying, well, what are the students gonna write about? I'm like, are you kidding me? What are they gonna write about? They're just gonna talk about many things. They could talk mm -hmm. about their parents' story, their grandparents' story. They could 
three of them could come together and, and write together a book, interviewing mm -hmm. people the way I did in Skip a Step. Um, I have a 16-year-old, Jasmine, who's doing, uh, helping me with the second uh, Skip a Step, and, and she loves nutrition. She wants to be a, a physician one day. And I already have five physicians lined up for her. I, 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 I mean, if I asked you, would you do an interview for, you know, how can you say no to that, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's many uh, seasoned professionals out mm -hmm. there that want to give back, they have a story to tell, and I want to capture those stories. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's wonderful. So how do people find you? Thank How you. can they work with you? Yeah, so I'm Lisa Caprelli. My website's lisacaprelli.com. Um, that's my Instagram and social media, and that's the best way to find me. Lisa, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for sharing. We're very excited. I'm excited for to everyone. read Unicorn Jazz to my children. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yay, thank you. Please. Got some yes. readers yes. here. Yes, we need to spread the word. Thank you. Definitely. Very exciting. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And we'll be back.